looking at a 3D water vapor image from around 12 p.m. Eastern time here of Tropical Storm Barrel on June 29th of 2024. And we have a big problem here is this tropical storm is near hurricane strength already, expected to become a major hurricane. I hope everybody is having a great day so far, but let's get right into the tropics topics headlines for our June 29th, 2024 in the early afternoon hours here. If you're watching in the Atlantic Ocean, it is probably the late afternoon here at the minimum on our Saturday, but we're looking at tropical storm barrel nearing hurricane strength already with 65 mile per hour winds in the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. Major hurricane impacts are are now expected for the Eastern Caribbean with at least 115 mile per hour sustained winds being indicated not only by the National Hurricane Center, but even more on some of the models. There's uncertainties in the track of the storm beyond Tuesday in the Caribbean. Plus, we've got new area to watch behind it. So let's get right into it here with our latest National Hurricane Center advisory and cone on our Saturday. As of the 11 a.m. Eastern Time advisory, the storm having 65 mile per hour winds and gusts up to 75 miles per hour is moving westward. That westward motion is at about 22 to 23 miles per hour at this time. Minimum pressure around 998 millibars. Now, that pressure is expected to continue to drop. When you have pressure that lowers, you tend to get winds that increase. So as we go over the course of the rest of the day today, by the 8 p.m. Eastern Time Advisory, 80 mile per hour winds being expected uh, sustained there. So a Cat 1 hurricane. But the National Hurricane Center anticipates by the end of our Saturday. Going into our Sunday morning, as you're seeing here, we're looking at more than likely a Category 2 hurricane if it continues strengthening like it is right now which the national hurricane thinks it will do so we could see seeing could be seeing 100 mile per hour sustained winds and a gust up to 120 miles per hour as we're just going to be about 24 hours out from direct hits to a lot of the windward islands there in the lesser antilles as you can see by sunday evening it's getting very close some of the outer bands probably already making it to barbados surrounding spots as this hurricane will be a very strong cat too according to the national hurricane center with 110 mile per hour sustained winds by our Sunday, June 30th in the evening. Going into the first day of July here, in the early morning, we could have already had a major hurricane by Sunday night, but definitely into our Monday morning, the National Hurricane Center, agreeing with a lot of the models that line up and say that this could be a Cat 3, a very strong one at that, impacting Granada all the way on up here to St. Lucia. And in fact, we do have some hurricane watches and uh, tropical storm watches already up for some of these areas. So if you live in any of these spots I'm circling, especially from Barbados to Granada to St. Vincent in the Grenadines, up there to St. Lucia, Martinique, all these spots down to Trinidad and Tobago as well. Don't want to forget about you guys. Make sure you're checking nhc.noaa.gov. That will tell you exactly whether you're under a tropical storm watch or a hurricane watch. But I can guarantee you if you're in that red cone right there, you are more than likely under a hurricane watch. As this storm will continue to be at least 115 miles per hour in strength, according to the Hurricane Center, going beyond Monday, heading towards our Tuesday. Now, again, these numbers aren't likely to be exactly correct. The storm could be 120. It could be 100 when it says it's going to be 115. But this is definitely some very good guidance to look at. As the cone widens with time, there's a little bit more uncertainty as to the exact track. Could be as far north as Cuba, according to the Hurricane Center, as we head towards the end of the upcoming week. Could be as far south as some parts of Central America there. Uh, heading into some places like Honduras there of Central America. So there's definitely a very high uncertainty down the line, but it could weaken a little bit with some interaction with islands as well as with some other systems. I'll be showing you a little bit later here in the video. Now let's look at that model track guide and see how it compares with the, the National Hurricane Center just showed. Again, going over the next 24 hours by Sunday morning, still making that approach towards the Lesser Antilles, specifically the Windward Islands, making that direct hit to Barbados into early Monday morning, probably, you know, really starting to kick on up right in the middle of the night, Sunday night going all the way through sunrise and maybe even thereafter for Barbados. All those islands I just listed as well from Trinidad and Tobago all the way on up there towards Martinique. These models in really good agreement that the direct hit, those direct impacts going to be occurring to those islands right around that time. Obviously, these islands are very small, as many of you may know, so there's probably not going to be much weakening even if the hurricane makes a quote-unquote landfall on the islands. As we go towards Tuesday morning, probably somewhere directly south of Puerto Rico, but far enough south that there's not going to be significant impacts up there other than a little bit of some wind and water. Getting awfully close to Hispaniola, though, by Wednesday morning, and then tracking towards the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico after passing near Jamaica or directly over it towards the end of the week. And that's going to really be from the midweek time frame onward for places like Jamaica in terms of impacts. Now, let's talk about the all-important impacts to the Windward Islands, the Lesser Antilles here. And as we go towards our Monday, in the early times of the day here, so around that 36 to 48 hour mark that you see on screen right here, that's when this is going to be making its way on through those areas here, so Barbados. 
you know, from Trinidad and Tobago all the way up to Martinique, all these impacts could be from a Cat 2 to a Cat 3. In fact, more than likely a Cat 3. This is why the National Hurricane Center has jumped on that Cat 3 strength mark already. You see all those models, really the median right there in low end Cat 3 uh, criteria there. Going into Tuesday and Wednesday, still a very strong major hurricane of Cat 3 strength, likely at the minimum here in parts of the Eastern Caribbean. That's the median out of the models. You do see things start to drop off though when those impacts could move towards Jamaica, other parts of the Caribbean, and the Western areas of the Caribbean. And that is more than likely because the northern fringes of the storm will be grazing islands from the greater Antilles all the way on over there towards places like Cuba, as well as the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. And well, as well as that, we'll also be dealing with a little bit of some interaction with another system that is a high pressure system I'll show you in a minute. So there's a little bit of stuff going on that could prohibit this system. There is a little dust impacting it right now. But nonetheless, we're going to see this shrimp shaped storm. That's pretty much what we have here as of our late Sunday. This is what we're looking at here with the HWRF model indicating that we're going to see this shrimp shaped storm continuing to kind of organize itself, try to build that eye wall here throughout the rest of the afternoon. We'll probably have a hurricane again. If not of the 2 p.m. advisory that's going to be right after I film this video, definitely by the 5 or 8 p.m. advisory this evening, assuming that strengthening continues to occur, which is the most likely scenario at this time. That's why by around 8 p.m. tonight in Eastern time here, the National Hurricane Center does agree that we'll have a Cat 1 hurricane of around 75 to 80 miles per hour for sustained winds with higher gusts pushing over that little yellow spot you see there with the one on it or just north of it. Remember, just because you see that track line on screen doesn't mean the storm is going to follow that exact path. But overall, nearer there's supposed to be a Category 2 on our Sunday morning. We're likely going to have this strengthening hurricane. The model does a really good job of showing we could even see some hefty impacts on the western side of this storm, depending on how lopsided or not lopsided it is. So that's something we'll have to track. It's more looking at the exact locations the storm is going right now, according to this model that I'd be focusing on not necessarily worrying about, you know, the extent of the bands and exactly where they are at any given time. Nonetheless, by the end of our Sunday, this is likely going to be a high-end Cat 2 or even low-end Cat 3 possibly, but the National Hurricane Center says Cat 2 working its way, you know, only about 10 to 12 hours out at the most from impacting Barbados head-on uh, from Dominica and Martinique all the way down there to Trinidad and Tobago bringing some impacts, whether it's from outer bands or a direct hit. Look at this. This is as we go towards around 2 to 5 a.m. Eastern time on our Monday morning. You know, we could even see this direct hit begin a little bit earlier than this, but right around Barbados at this time, that's when I'd expect some of the worst bands to have already begun moving in, continuing to move in as well at that time. There is that curly Q look you see right there, that shrimp look. By the way, the shrimp look, uh, I got that from Weather Center Nazario, my good friend and channel friend here who I actually helped with a thumbnail earlier today. Go over and check his channel out. He does a more in-depth tropical coverage as well, but I hope you'll subscribe here too. As I'm keeping you updated on the Caribbean, I also do USA weather forecasts. That's beside the point though. As far north as Guadalupe up there, as far south as Trinidad and Tobago, again, this is where some of these bands that could contain heavy rain and gusty winds could be. But again, the most direct hit to Barbados likely during the early morning into maybe even the mid and late morning hours there of our Monday, that is our July 1st as well as other areas of the Windward Islands, taking that big hit from a likely major hurricane that's going to continue to probably strengthen. I think there's no reason that this can't continue strengthening and building up as it moves from east to west here into the eastern Caribbean. Again, I really think that we could see... Yes, some bands already extending as far north as Puerto Rico and surrounding areas of the Greater Antilles and the Northern Lesser Antilles here by the time we go towards our late, late in our Monday going into our Tuesday. What I'm also really thinking is that we could see this be a Cat 4. You know, the National Hurricane Center is going to be more conservative with their numbers the further out you go. So while this shows Cat 3 staying far south of Puerto Rico, but trying to make that northwesterly track and graze Haiti and the Dominican Republic, Heading out of late Tuesday and into our Wednesday, we could very well have a major Cat 4 moving through with 130 plus mile per hour sustained winds. That's why while the marker says 115, you don't just go with that. You look at some of these models and you say, okay, what's really prohibiting this from being this strong? Uh, with some of those northern bands grazing at Hispaniola with some of those really heavy rains and gusty winds. Again, that would be going out of our Tuesday heading into our Wednesday, Wednesday, July 3rd. That is the day we're looking at here. This model indicating that it could go a little bit north of the track line that you see from the National Hurricane Center there. So again, that's why you don't fully trust those either, but it's a very good, you know, basis to look at here. Continuing 
from Wednesday into our Thursday. Jamaica could be impacted around that time. Parts of western Haiti going towards now Cuba as well. Again, keep in mind that all of this does fall in the National Hurricane Center cone, so that's why we're using this model. It does a good job, I think, of showing how intensity could go. Will we will still have a Cat 3 or Cat 4 like this model tries to indicate moving near the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and Cuba going into our Thursday, July 4th? That's a little uncertain, but we could still certainly see a Cat 1 or Cat 2 hurricane at the minimum as the National Hurricane Center is indicating now. Let's take a look at that mid-level pattern here using Weatherbell Maps. You can get a free trial link to them right down there in the description. Take a look at this. Going towards our Tuesday, July 2nd of 2024, this shows really where our steering is. You see some of these yellows here just north of the Caribbean islands and just east of the Bahamas. A lot of that is some ridging. We've got some high pressure in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere here. This is helping to keep the system south of it because we've got that clockwise flow around it. That encourages some pretty fast east to west motion through the Caribbean and it also kind of keeps the islands up here a little bit safer. However, what I want you to notice here as we go out of Tuesday and into our Wednesday here, notice that Hispaniola there, so Haiti and the Dominican Republic, definitely a little bit more exposed and out of that ridging than Puerto Rico is. That's why we could see a, definitely a northern end impact from this hurricane really slam the southern parts of Hispaniola there. So Haiti and the DR definitely be prepared for that. The storm could weaken not only because it's having some interactions with land later this week, but also this is the other thing that I was talking about earlier, the factor that could weaken it. Look how it's having to force its way up against that ridging that's trying to be here in the Gulf of Mexico over some parts of Cuba. The same ridge that's also probably protecting Florida from any impacts at this point. That stays to the north, so really the Gulf of Mexico, the northern Gulf anyway, at this time, based on the model tracks that we looked at earlier, based on this single model, the GFS, it really does look likely that the guidance is going to take this into the southern Gulf or right over Central America. The strength of it at that point is very unknown, but if any U.S. impacts were to occur out of the system, keep in mind that it would probably be to South Texas and not really much of anywhere else based on this right now still keep your guard uh you know up in some parts of the gulf coast region though right behind this there's an additional storm that the gfs model the euro model all of these models are picking up on it's having a rising chance of development it's been 50 percent recently now it's at 60 percent as of this early morning heading into the 2 p.m update that comes again right out after this video in eastern time we will be probably seeing this chance go up to 70 or 80 percent at least i think from the national hurricane center this next system is going to be following pretty much the exact track line that barrel is taking so this could become soon our invest 96l and then eventually tropical depression 3 and then soon after that tropical storm chris so while we're watching hurricane barrel more than likely up there heading into our tuesday in the central caribbean or north central caribbean we're going to be watching this new tropical depression or storm approaching the same areas here if the windward islands look at this might not be quite as strong because it's going to take a little longer to develop, but we could still certainly see some tropical storm or hurricane impacts. And you need to be on high alert anywhere here in the Lesser Antilles heading towards the midweek time frame. So while the Western Caribbean seeing a hit from hurricane barrel or tropical storm barrel, whatever it is at that time, we're also going to be watching a hit to the Eastern Caribbean just a few days behind it this is really honestly something like never seen before especially for this time of the year and it's why you need to be on high alert as far north as once again puerto rico but especially into hispaniola as especially if this track line goes the same way we could see impacts up there it's really uncertain what could happen by the end of the week but it looks like there could at the minimum be a tropical storm or depression with flooding rain continuing through the caribbean maybe even a hurricane to be determined if something will track and i'll keep you updated on here in tropics topics at one nation weather uh, but regardless of whether we're watching what's going there into the southwestern Gulf and the Bay of Campeche or what's back here in the Central Caribbean, a very active week ahead in the tropics. I'll also keep you updated if you live in the USA on your USA on land weather patterns. But very important for those of you in the Caribbean, if you want some coverage that goes beyond my just one nation that I have in the title, make sure you're subscribing to the channel so you stay tuned on the tropics. Always check out Weather Center Nazario as well. That is WX Center Nazario, uh, a good friend of mine on YouTube who has his own channel. He was in the Navy. Uh, so make sure you check him out because he has great weather content there. Speaking with experience over there as well. That's it for this update. Stay safe out there, everyone. Always check in nhc.noah.gov for the most official forecasts. One Nation Weather.